the relationship between infant feeding and obesity is really important to look at because we know that um, eating habits are established early and not only are they established early but they track throughout childhood and into adulthood. Obesity we also know starts early and it um, tracks into uh, childhood and adulthood. Therefore it's really important that we establish good eating habits from the start and um, we work with parents to promote healthy eating habits so they're you know, promoted during childhood and they're maintained throughout childhood and into adulthood, thereby preventing the risk of childhood obesity. And what are the main risk factors for early obesity? Um, the main risk factors for um, early obesity are, the biggest one is maternal obesity. So if the mother is obese or overweight, there's a greater risk their child is going to be obese. Um, then early rapid weight gain is the second um, largest um, contributing factor. Bottle feeding a child um, increases risk. Early introduction of solids, if you introduce them um, before the age of six months, then that's an increased risk. And then the types of foods and the quantity of foods is really important. And is there any evidence that early feeding practices of specific groups, like ethnic minority groups and lower socioeconomic groups, influences obesity risk in their children? Yes, there's a strong association between infant feeding practices, early infant feeding practices, and um, and and maternal and, and family characteristics. It's long proven that um, parents from low socioeconomic um, backgrounds, less educated parents, are less likely to breastfeed their um, infant. Um, they're also less likely to give fruit and vegetables to their infant, but um, unfortunately more likely to give sugary drinks and high fat um, foods in, in the diet. And we've also got, um, interesting, the ethnic differences emerging early. Uh, so you've got um, high sugary drink intake amongst the South Asian groups, and whereas in the white groups, high intake of fry, um, processed foods is coming out quite clearly in our data. Do the types of foods offered during the complementary feeding period really impact on future food preferences? The types of foods that children are offered early on in complementary feeding will have a profound effect on what is uh, chosen later on. Because as Pinky has said, um, there's tracking in early infancy to later life. So if mothers are offering fruits and vegetables at complementary feeding, then this will establish food preferences early on. And to have those food preferences established is much easier when the children are younger. It's much more difficult to introduce these foods when the children are older. So we know that age is an important determinant of food preferences at the point of introduction. So the earlier the better, and the more varied the fruits and vegetables offered, the likelier the children will have a larger repertoire of food preferences for those foods. Why is it so important to have fruit and vegetables at that time? What the research has shown is that fruits and vegetables offered at complementary feeding increases the likelihood that they'll be accepted. And if they're accepted early on, then they're more likely to be part of the repertoire early on. If mothers leave um, introduction of vegetables until much later, say after nine months or older, then it's much more difficult to persuade children to eat these foods because other foods are then competing with the vegetables um, to be liked. And it's much more easy to introduce a vegetable when the child hasn't got any expectations about solid foods yet. But when they've tasted everything, then vegetables become less liked. So, so early on is better. So is there any evidence that introducing um, vegetables early in life can actually discourage a fussy eating? Um, the uh, relationship between fussy eating and complementary feeding is very interesting. Um, the research conducted by Claire Llewellyn and others at UCL have shown quite nicely that food fussiness is a heritable trait. So quite difficult therefore to reduce fussy eating by the introdu introduction of specific foods. But what our research has shown is that when you introduce something like artichoke to a child, even a fussy child, if you offer it frequently enough, they will actually increase the intake of that vegetable. It's just that they eat far less than other children. 
and fussy eating therefore is an eating treat you have to manage it but you're not going to change it by the introduction of um, fruits and vegetables and is there any evidence that vegetable consumption early in life can actually impact on obesity risk the relationship between vegetable consumption and later obesity risk is unclear. It is not known whether vegetable intake in early life has any predictive value for later obesity. Would you agree with that? Thing? I agree with that. Yeah. And can early feeding practices influence children's longer term ability to regulate their appetite and food intake? Um, the regulation of appetite and food intake in children might be influenced by feeding practices. For example, it is understood that breastfeeding will promote self-regulation. So if mothers are breastfeeding um, for the first six months of the child's life, that will increase the likelihood that the child will learn to self-regulate. Um, whereas formula feeding is um, perhaps because it's in the control of the mother, she can see the volume of food and she is able to cajole children to eat. Um, it's less in the control of the child. So one might predict that formula feeding would increase the likelihood of poor regulation. But again, this evidence is not entirely clear. Um, but we do know that breastfeeding is definitely best and is more likely to facilitate self-regulation.